So this is the main composition window that I've got. There are five slides and each of these have their own timeline and animation. Uh, so I've converted all those to symbols. I'll take you into the first one. Each slide has got an in and an off code um, on each of its layers, as you can see. There, that's going to be important later on, but more on that in a bit. For the background picture, I've used basic keyframes to enable the swipe effect, as you can see here, to um, adjust that number there. Uh, basic motion paths have been created for uh, the text and the rectangle. Um, the text has also got keyframes for opacity, as you can see there, which go from 0 to 100%. Now this entire symbol has got a stop code on it there, which you can see there, meaning the playhead doesn't keep going past this point, it essentially freezes the frame. And that really is important for the entire animation. Now that whole process was then repeated for each symbol, and each symbol is then controlled by this little dialer here and that's got its own little animation on it with an easy ease just to sort of bounce it on for the first time uh, on this dial there are five rotations one for each number uh, which correlates to each symbol again the animation of these were implemented using keyframes to man manipulate x y position just allows the numbers to move around. Uh, each animation, each one of these is an animation, each of those has got a stop code on it, again just to um, stop the player carrying on and the dialer effectively just spinning constantly around. Uh, each number has got a few lines of code on it. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. I'll just bring that down to there. Uh, I've written this line of code which essentially allows me to reach the timeline of a nested symbol. In this case it's the five picture slides that I've got. This code basically functions to tell the software in this instance that when number one is clicked, play symbol one's timeline there and hide or turn off the other four. The labels on this timeline here, as you can see there, um, they act as markers, telling each number which section of the animation it belongs to, which is then controlled by its code. So as you can see there, it's got in one, which correlates to that marker there. This one's got in two, and so on. Obviously for each symbol, the code plays the respective slide. So if I go on to code um, number two, that plays slide two and turns off all the others. And so on, you get the idea. And that's basically in my animation. Um, this uh, dial here was created in Illustrator, just with some circles uh, with numbers. Exported all those as individual layers and um, imported it into here. Okay, so the first thing I did uh, to create my animation was to create this little alien, uh, which I did in Illustrator. Uh, it was just using pen and drawing tools, uh, filling it in, making sure they're all on separate layers because I needed to animate separate bits of those, and then adding a shadow to the feet. Uh, this was then imported into After Effects, as you can see here. Uh, I added a solid as a background uh, just to make it blue. Uh, I also, if I can find the alien, I parented all of his features to his body so I could then move the body and so I could rotate the body and everything would move with it, which you'll actually see on the animation in a minute. So as you see there, he moves backwards and forwards everything moves with it, apart from the arms, the arms were the only thing that didn't really, uh, sorry, the arms and the feet, they were the only things that didn't move. Uh, I made the speakers appear from the top, just using keyframes in positions, uh, then using scale to 
squish them and bring them back out to size. Uh, just, it makes them look as though they're bounced, it just adds realism to it. Uh, the speaker cones um, I imported as separate components so I could animate the size of those. Um, so if you look, you can actually see that they move in and out. And that was literally just um, animating the size um, ever so slightly, just to make them slightly bigger, slightly smaller, and do that a few times. Um, these then disappear from the screen. As you can see there, using popping tool. Uh, now the way I did this was um, I created one line and used a repeater. And the repeater creates several lines um, in a circle and then you animate the opacity of that and the size of that. So it starts off quite small and the bigger it gets, the opacity and the size and then it just disappears. And if you couple that with the sound of an actual pop, it's quite realistic. So the icons that you can see here, I created those in Photoshop. Um, let me take you over there. Uh, that was literally just creating circle, filling it, and using an icon off the internet, exporting that, putting that into After Effects. I copied that three or four times with different icons. Um, I then used the line repeater that you saw earlier, and then I started to um, vary the thickness of the line and the colour and the right that they came out. Again, ensuring that they disappear as it gets further out. Uh, for this one, it was circles. Uh, again, it was the very same principle. Different circles, using keyframes to make them appear and disappear and making them go thinner as they go out, using different colours for those as well. The third one I did, I used triangles. Again, just using one triangle, creating a repeater. Uh, setting the angle to 33.3 .3 just so it takes itself around the circle and using keyframes to fade that out as well and again when I coupled that with some popping noises again that sounded really good uh, next thing I did was oh yeah I forgot to say as well uh, the mouth I had um, an open and a closed which I created in um, Illustrator and um, Every time I talked, I just um, selected between um, open and closed as well. Uh, next thing I did was create two lights. So for the, to create lights, all these had to be 3D layers. So I made all those 3D, as you can see there. So I created two lights and um, used keyframes to change their position in relation to each other. So there's one moved up, the other one moved down, and vice versa. Um, I also had a microphone rise up from the bottom. Again, just using a keyframe. Uh, the confetti uh, was from Cinema 4D, which I haven't actually got on this computer at the moment, so I can't show you how I actually did that. Again, that was using particles, uh, repeaters, uh, so they all fell down. And then I did a fade to white, which you can see the white solid there, just to uh, identify the change of uh, the change of scenery as it were. So for this scene again we used a different uh, solid colour. Uh, we added some lights across the top. Now the whole point of this scene is that this character is walking. Now to do that not only have you got to move his body so it does that, you've got to move his legs to do that as well to show that he's walking. You've got to physically move him across the page whilst he's doing that. And I used the lights running the opposite direction to him so if he's going across the page like that the lights do that as well so as you can see on this animation the lights move one way he moves the other it gives the it gives the impression that he's walking so i animated his arms so they move from left to right i'm um, sorry up to down uh his legs um the walking sequence was very hard to be honest to try and get it to look well. I think it looks okay, but if I'd done it again, perhaps I could have used more time to make it look further realistic. Uh, okay, and then the next thing that happens is um, a calendar. So I have a calendar that comes up. Uh, if I take you in and show you one number, then it'll be easier to show you how I copied and pasted that for each number in the calendar. 
So I created a pink background, put a number one on it, uh, parented those to each other so they stayed together. I then keyframed uh, the size and also, you know, I will see very well the roundness. So it starts off round, quite small, and as it comes further out and bigger, uh, it becomes more square. And once I've done that for one, copied that for each number of the calendar. Um, so as you can see, it's quite hard to see on here actually. Um, so the top layer coming from the right hand side and all the rest coming from the left hand side. Uh, again, just using motion pass. So once all of those have come on, uh, there's a white background that starts at the top and brings its way underneath them all um, to the bottom. Uh, and then the number five appears. So this is the main um, bit of the calendar, the bit of the animation that people want to see. So again, I've just used a motion path um, and scale through keyframes to start it off quite small and bring it further and further up until it actually fills the frame. So that comes up. And this is where you've got, again, the circles that I used earlier of different sizes that I just keyframe. So uh, one starts off quite small and gets bigger and one grows within that and so on. The number five appears and then I've got um, just various titles. Again, that is just simply through um, motion paths that come into the frame and then come back out of the frame. I'll have to excuse the resolution on this. I'm not quite sure what's going on. So once I've come up and gone back out, yeah, it's better to show you on here actually. So that comes up. Ooh, gone a bit quick there. So that plays through and disappears. And then we have the little alien talking just for a brief second. And then we have some fonts which I've created. Well, not so much created, but I've animated. Um, the text style was created in Illustrator um, and imported. Uh, I made each letter an individual component. I used a pen tool to mask over each line, making sure that the ends don't meet, so that had an open path on them. Uh, I added a stroke in effects. This makes a stroke effect layer appear in the timeline. Um, I ticked, I think it was stroke sequentially. This makes the stroke appear in the order that you drew it. So if you start off and you create the bottom of the C, it will then go and create the top of the screen, um, the C. I changed the line width to cover the original line and uh, to colour to something noticeable. I clicked the stopwatch on, I'm sorry I'm not able to show you all this, I haven't actually got the file, I'm struggling to find it, so I'm just going to have to explain how I did it. Um, I tip the stopwatch on the stroke effect to activate the layer in the keyframes, go to the, uh, the end of it and change it to zero, then to the point where you want the animation to stop, and I made that uh, 100%. I changed the paint star to reveal the original object. Uh, and I did that in reverse to make the letters disappear as well. So once I'd done that all for the letters to appear. Oh, let's just go on again. For those to disappear as well. Uh, the phone number, I used the wiggly scale uh, wipe. Uh, changing the parameters of the rotation just to get the desired effect. Uh, I added two slider effects. One to get a random effect and one to get numbers to collapse and disappear. And for the email, I added an expression selector and slider. And then that faded to black. As you can see there. And that is how I created my animation.